Hello, you intrepid wine lovers and you saucy voyeurs. I've got a big, big treat for you today. Today, we're gonna to talk about storing your wines properly. So I am gonna give you a big reveal of my own wine fridge. I am doing this against my better judgment. I've got some renovations going on. And so my wine fridge is in my office and my office is right now a mess, but don't give me guff about it. I'm doing this for your benefit. I hope you all appreciate it. I'm gonna show you very, my very messy wine fridge in my very messy wine office. Let's not waste time. Let's just go do it. Hello, wine lovers. I'm Erin, the founder and chief sommelier at the Wine Sisters, and welcome to our YouTube channel. This is the exact place you wanna be because every week, we create fabulous, entertaining, and informative videos, if I do say so myself, on how to eat, drink, and entertain. And today we are class three of September's mini-series, if we will. This is what I'm calling Back to Wine School. Here in Toronto, Canada, I lead a wine school and I also host tastings, of course, through our company, The Wine Sisters. And we've received so many repeat questions over the years that I thought I would just put together this little mini series on the most asked and most burning issues that wine lovers have. So you will remember that class one, we were talking uh, all about how to open, decant, and properly serve a wine. Class two, we were talking about the three steps to properly tasting a wine to accept it or send it back. And now we're at class three, where I'm going to show you a few hints and tips on how to gather your wine collection and store them for the mid or long-term cellaring. And you'll definitely want to return next week as well, because we're talking about food and wine pairings. Oh yeah, we're tackling that issue. So make sure without further ado, you hit subscribe and that bell to make sure you get alerted when that video drops next week. But back to the task at hand. Let's talk about gathering a collection. Now, today's class is not so much on what wines will work out well for midterm or long-term cellaring. Generally speaking, most reds that have a little bit of tannic structure, they're gonna last you three, five, 10 years. Uh, reds that have a little bit more weight and possibly even oak aging, they're gonna last you two, five, seven years generally speaking. But hopefully within your neighborhood, you have a favorite wine store that is uh, well-staffed with knowledgeable people and you can start to gather your collection from them. If not, you can also head to our blog. I've linked it below. It's on thewinesisters.com and we've got lots of ideas for long-term collections and, and wines that could make it for the longer haul. But today I wanna to talk specifically about once you have that collection, how you're going to keep it without it turning prematurely. In my house, I have things broken down into drink now. So I like to have house wines on the ready. Uh, I have a fabulous blog about that. That's also linked about why you should always have a house wine. It doesn't always have to be the same thing. You can rotate it, but that's going to be, that sits on a shelf. I'll show you that in a second. That sits on a shelf for turn and burn. These are wines that I'm going through within the month. Then I have a uh, wine fridge, and this is a temperature controlled, humidity controlled, uh, wine fridge that is pretty much stacked full and that's going to be for wines that are going to be not touched for anything from 10 years to up to 30 years and so that stays pretty compact and I also have rented a space off-site lots of these are available popping up everywhere in most towns uh, I have a storage facility where I keep a lot of my wines that are going to go into the overflow of the inventory and so that's how I've done it in my own house. You wanna consider four things. You wanna keep your wines in a dark place, so not a lot of lights flicking on and off and certainly not close to a window. You wanna keep them in a relatively cool place, not cold like your garage in January, but relatively cool, so a pantry or a root cellar. Definitely not the laundry room and definitely not near a furnace. You want to think about the humidity. So probably the attic is not a good place to put it. You know where I'm going with this. And you want to keep it in a place where your wines can lie and wait relatively undisturbed. So next to the kids' playroom, and certainly not in the fridge or sorry, not in the kitchen, this is not going to work out well for you. So ergo, where is probably the best place in your home to keep your wines? In an unfinished basement in a quiet, dark corner that doesn't see a lot of traffic flow. Put up some nice shelving from, you know, your local home hardware store and 
leave them there and they will be fine. Actually, your basement's perfect. The same way that wine wineries will have their cellars in the basement. It's got the right ambient temperature, typically around 50, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. It's got the right ambient humidity, about a 50 to 70% humidity range. And it's got the darkness that we really need because of course it's underground. And typically people are not traipsing through there all that much. So that would be perfect. But if you do have a finished basement or you live in a condo, hmm, that's probably not gonna work out well. So maybe what you wanna consider doing is finding an unused closet or a little used closet. I know that's some tough real estate to give up, but what you can do is you can get yourself one of these very expensive boxes from your wine store, just your regular shipping box, put your wines in your shipping box and you put this shipping box at the bottom of the closet. The closet, while yes, the temperature will fluctuate depending on how warm or cold you keep your home, at least it will be dark, it will be relatively undisturbed, and you know, we'll have to deal with the humidity. I wouldn't recommend this for very precious wines for many decades, but for a wine that you're going to have three to five years down the line, this is okay. So those are kind of your options. The unfinished basement, really great. If not, see if you can get carve out a little place in the pantry or something like that. You don't want it to be too exposed to the cold because too cold is going to ruin your wines just as much as too hot. If not, consider investing in renting a space off site. The downside of that is that if it's Tuesday night and you just want to have a glass of wine and your wine is halfway across the city, that's a little bit annoying. And really what I think is the best option if you have the space, if you can commit the budget, get a little wine fridge. They come in all kinds of sizes and all kinds of budgets. Start small if you need to. It's going to be the best way to keep your wine for the, you know, pretty long haul, a couple of decades. I'm gonna show you mine, you ready? Let's go see it. All right, friends, I told you, this is not well lit, but uh, this is the girl right here that's hosting my wine collection. You can see I have some uh, cocktailing things some experiments, if you will, up on the top. I definitely need to get a bigger one because you can see that this fridge is pretty full. Uh, and some of them I have neck tags to remind me. I've kept in um, pieces like little write-ups about them to remind me about, you know, how they were made. But these wines will all be in here. Let me see if I can pull one out for you. This is a really great Rioja. This is a Grand Reserva. Uh, it's from 2016 and right now I'm recording this in 2023. I really am not in a rush to open this up. I probably won't be opening this up until at least 2026 and then beyond. So anyway, so this is sort of what I've got going on for my cellar. I've got Bordeaux, Chianti Classicos, I've got Grand Reservas, I have, this is a really neat one that I found from one of my favorite Italian producers, Michele Chirello. We've got some nice Napas. There's Mr. Mondavi being represented. There's a couple of Ontario where I live. Uh, here's a great one from uh, Mason Vineyard, which is a terrific boutique winery in Ontario. So we've got some good stuff going on and I'm pretty excited to get around to opening them when I do. So we're going to close that. Like I said, I've got a much bigger one coming because I need it. Uh, some of the cocktailing stuff up there, but oh good. Do not criticize me. We are under renovations. I told you this. So, of course, all my wine books, my cookbooks, things like that, loads of notebooks. But here's some stuff that I have for quick turn and burns. These are things that I'm having within... Oh, that's a picture of my sister and I when we were little. Isn't that cute? Um, but we've got like a nice little rosé there. We've got some scotches. I have... This is a Lambrusco. Here's a really nice... This will be consume soon. This is uh, a Pinot Noir from uh, Burgundy. We've got some more Rioja there. Uh, but these are going to be just on, I don't know why that's there, but you know, it's renovations. But we've got some really nice little turn and burn wines that we're uh, having as our house pours that we're having, you know, uh, and then I will replace them as they go down. So that's kind of how we roll around here. And uh, there's some more cases. Oh my God. Okay. Renovations. That's enough of that. Put your eyes back in your head. I know. 
I know, it's embarrassing. So I hope you liked that little voyeuristic tour. Once again, I do not want to hear any guff about the state of my office, nor the state of my wine fridge. Finally, kids, before I leave you, I hope that you get some great wine fridges. I hope you found this very helpful. Please leave me any comments or questions in the uh, comment section below. I promise I will get back to you as soon as I see them. But I will leave you really quickly with some ideas about what might go for immediate for those house wines that I talked to you about. Something in a clear glass bottle, something that's unoaked. This is uh, a fairly popular Verdicchio. Um, this bottle is probably pretty iconic to most of you. So, you know, something that's going to be light and bright. We're talking about your rosés, your Sauvignon Blancs, your Pinot Grigios, these Northern Italian whites. You know, get a case, if this is your favorite or whatever, pick up a half case or a case and you can have that within the month as you entertain. Your mid-tier wines. So both of these, we have a fuller bodied Chardonnay. I just pulled these out as examples. I have a fuller body bodied California Chardonnay and I have a lighter bodied Burgundy Pinot Noir, of course. So these are both in that sort of $30, $40 range. These will go five to 10 years. So keep these in a nice wine fridge. Um, keep these in the corner of your basement. You're gonna get five to 10 years out of these. They're drinking well now, so you certainly don't have to, but you'll get five to 10 if that's something that piques your curiosity. And then when we start getting into these bigger boys, so I'm talking about wines that, yes, you've ponied up some cash for. This is a California Cabernet Sauvignon. In the Ontario market, it's about $90, I believe. But when you get these wines that have a little bit more pedigree, a little bit more grow Gravitas, so your Napa Valley wines, your Bordeaux, your Super Tuscans, your, uh, you know, what's the words I'm looking for? Barolo, sorry. I'm starting to like wear down and I haven't had enough to drink today, so I'm starting to fade out. But when you go to these pedigreed regions, you're probably paying you know, close to $100, definitely more than $100. These are the wines that definitely deserve a little bit of that premium treatment. Laid down nice and quietly, nice and comfortably in the right temperature. Hopefully that's a wine fridge. And these will last you 25, 30 to 50 years. So you just sort of kind of start to consider it about it that way. That's a little bit on how to store very top level on how to look for wines that are going to last for you. And next week, like I said, we're gonna to return to seeing how we can enjoy these wines with some terrific food options. So I hope you'll join me then. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell so you'll know when we drop a new video, which is every single week, of course. And until I see you next week, stay well, drink better.